Ethics can be defined in many ways. There are broad definitions and more specific definitions relating to things like professions and certain contexts. Russeman, Mary and Walton said ethics provides a set of principles for examining the morality of personal and professional behaviours. They continued to say, ethics is a field of study concerned with understanding morals, values, judgments, responsibilities and obligations. I think this explanation of ethics summarises it well in a general sense, but McQuillan provided a more healthcare-specific definition. McQuillan's definition is as follows. Ethics, generally felt to be ways of understanding the moral life and of little practical relevance. It is the heart of what it means to be a physician. This definition shows how ethics can be a blurry line but is always of the utmost importance. The case study by James D. Capozzi and Rosamond Rhodes titled Ethics in Practice demonstrates an ethical issue that can arise in the healthcare industry. The case study from the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery is an example of how doctors may have to take a different approach towards the family of a patient when a family member is required to make decisions on behalf of the patient. This sort of situation is common in hospitals when patients are deemed unfit to make decisions themselves. This can be the case due to mental status or serious trauma. Doctors can be faced with several ethical issues in their professions. When working in hospitals, doctors are under immense pressure. Like everyone, doctors face personal difficulties and frequently must determine if they are fit to perform at the best of their ability. Doctor-patient confidentiality is vital for legal and moral reasons. Doctors are aware of their obligation to maintain confidentiality, but worried friends and families can be demanding. It is important for the doctor to disclose information appropriately and thoughtfully. Issues can arise between co-workers and in a sensitive environment like hospitals, employees must work well together for the benefit of the patients. If a doctor is aware of conflict amongst other staff, like all employees, it is important that they take correct steps to resolve the issue regardless of their personal stance on the matter. Waiting lists are common in hospitals and in terms of surgeries, transplants and appointments. Doctors must ensure they don't let their personal relations and opinions of the patients impact their viewpoint of their position on certain wait lists. Disagreements with patients and families regarding treatment can be common in hospitals. Regardless of the doctor's ability to explain the recommended treatments, sometimes patients and their families will disagree that it is the best course of action. Their emotions are often clouding their judgment and doctors must respect that while also ensuring the patient receives the treatment that they need. Medical errors are unfortunate but very real aspects of the profession. Misdiagnosis and incorrect medication are two examples of medical errors. Doctors must make the steps to correct the error while dealing with the backlash that can occur. When a patient's illness is deemed terminal, it is important that the doctor considers the patient's quality of remaining life before continuing or ceasing treatment. This ethical issue can be difficult for doctors as they are often faced with pressure from families wanting to continue treatment despite their professional opinion suggesting otherwise. Surgical innovations and technologies are always evolving. Doctors can be faced with the opportunity to try new procedures and treatments. Although all new technologies and innovations are thoroughly tried and tested prior to practical use, it can be difficult for doctors to select appropriate cases to use these on. Sometimes patients can refuse treatments. This can come from the patient directly or from a family member acting on their behalf. This can be due to religious reasons, past experiences or several other factors. Doctors must ensure they are respectful of the patient's wishes while doing what they can to get the best outcome for the patient's health. As previously mentioned, religion and personal preferences can impact a patient's willingness to receive treatment. It can also make consultations difficult if a patient has opinions and preferences that don't align with the situation. An example of this is a woman only wanting to be treated by a female doctor. Although this can be frustrating for doctors, it is important that these preferences are respected. Doctors all over the world act accordingly to specific guidelines. There are certain guidelines in each country. In Australia, Doctors must follow a code titled the Good Medical Practice, a code of conduct for doctors in Australia. This code is endorsed by all medical boards in all states and territories of Australia, as well as the Australian Medical Council. It follows the Health Practitioner Regulation National Law Act of 2009 and covers all principles and standards that doctors are expected to follow in regard to their ethical and professional conduct. In the case that was mentioned earlier, a 92-year-old woman with Alzheimer's disease and mild hypertension presented with pain in her hip. She lives in a nursing home and requires maximal assistance to perform certain tasks, including moving between her bed and chair. Upon examination, it was found that she had a displaced hip fracture. She requires surgery to insert a compression screw to repair the fracture. 
Due to her Alzheimer's disease, she is unable to provide informed consent and her family are left responsible to provide consent to the surgery. They refuse the surgery as they feel it is too dangerous given her age. If the patient was able to provide consent but refuses, the doctor must respect her wishes under the principle of autonomy. But seeing as though it is her family that are providing consent, the doctor should be more persuasive in their approach. Although legally, the decision of the family is to be respected as though it is that of the patient, but if the doctor feels as though the family are making an ill-informed decision, they should be less compliant. In this instance, the family are concerned as she is elderly and already requires assisted living. What they are likely forgetting to consider is the pain that she will be in if she is made to continue living with the fracture. Although the outcome is not explicitly mentioned in the case study, it is implied that the decision made by the family is not in the best interest of the patient and stated that the doctor should take appropriate measures to override their choice. This generally involves the hospital's ethics committee and can sometimes extend to legal court. This case study exemplifies the real issue of families having to provide consent for a patient and not providing their consent despite the recommendation of doctors. This is an example of applied ethics where autonomy of the patient is limited. As autonomy refers to self-governance and the right to make decisions for your body, the patient was lacking full autonomy. It was partial as the doctor still required consent prior to performing surgery, but not entire as the patient was unable to choose this for herself. The principle of non-maleficence in this case study refers to the doctor making recommendations that will not intentionally do harm to the patient. In their professional opinion, it would be more harmful to not proceed with surgery as the patient is likely to be in immense pain. Veracity is an important ethical principle in any case. In this particular case study, the doctor must be truthful to the family regarding all aspects of the situation. This includes surgical complications, risks and recovery time. Not only must the doctor be truthful about these aspects, they must also ensure that they don't exaggerate the truth in order to gain the outcome that they desire. As well as being an example of applied ethics, this case study is also an example of normative ethics. It shows the consequentialist theory of ethics rather than deontological ethics. As the doctor is considering the outcome of surgery, as well as not proceeding with the surgery, it is a demonstration of consequential ethics. If the doctor took a more deontological approach, they would have accepted the family's initial decision because legally their choice is just as honourable as the patient's themselves. This approach would not consider the quality of life for the patient if surgery is not performed. Recommendations for the case study would be trying to gain consent from the family before taking any further steps. After the initial stress of having an unwell family member has subdued, the family may be more receptive and willing to follow the recommendations of the doctor, which in this case is proceeding with the surgery. The level of pain and how it is managed, the mobility and level of care that the patient will have in both circumstances should be covered so the family are aware of the repercussions if the surgery is not performed. As the severity of the situation is not overly drastic, time can be taken to gain consent from the family rather than having to go straight to an ethics committee, which can be the case in some instances. If the doctor is still unable to gain consent from the family, they should then follow the steps required to override consent. This example of an ethical issue is something that doctors face regularly in hospitals and the severity of this particular issue does vary. The personal and professional opinion of doctors play a role in how they approach a situation and does not always align with the guidelines that they are expected to follow.